our first very special guest, the crab god himself, Pablo. <laughs> Hi. It's just a pleasure to be here. We are honored to have you. Hey, everyone. Um, we've gotten a lot of cards with the recent uh, packs, and our builds are still up in the air. It's pretty much one of the first times in the last couple of years where he had to deck build. So we've all ended up with different decks, I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah. Have we find? I am always going to play rebuild, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We can finally start showing the difference between playstyles, I think, in deck building. So what are you playing, Anas? Well, my list is uh, zero conflict character, zero court games, spyglass with uh, three those who serve. And uh, it works pretty well, but it loses in the mirror, as you know. And with um, Q-Denida, right? Yeah, yeah. So the problem I see with that is like... Um... I don't understand why you use Curing Hida when you don't have a rebuild because you're gonna you sometimes you're gonna see your Iron Mines getting discarded or your Karada getting discarded. And that sounds bad. Yeah, like uh m maybe you can you can actually dump some Iron Mines because you have reprieves and, and other saves. But losing the, the Karada district is, is like um, losing some matchups <laughs> directly. So uh, I can understand why uh, Kyu Denida ability is, is much better than, than Shiruni Shiyama. Uh, I don't know uh, if you guys use, use it a lot, but uh, most of my games, it, it was like a plus one, plus one in one of every two turns or something like that. And, and it wasn't really good with, with 10 starting honor. So yeah, I, I am totally agree. wanting to change uh, the stronghold, but it's uh, like Q the that ties you to to rebuild. Yeah, it's it's a hard choice. I don't really think that it ties you to rebuild, uh, because like even if you mill out a iron mine, right? You still thin the deck, and it's the you get the same probability of opening it in the dynasty phase, as you would with Siro Nishiyama. It also mills other cards, so it thins your deck. Mathematically, yeah, you still get the Karada? same chances, no matter what. Karada, ah. yes. If I mill it, then I'm fucked. But <laughs> if Karada is in the last, like, 15 cards, it's the same result, right? I can't get it. That's over 50% of the games. It's risky. You have to admit that. I don't like. You get the same chances of opening it every dynasty phase. It's just that on one occasion I will mill it, on the other one it will be stuck in the bottom of my deck. I always open four cards every turn, right? Yeah. Another thing with Cutting Hida is sometimes you, you don't want to like miss the passing fate every turn. So you're like uh curing Hida, I buy a guy and then I pass. So that's how I'm using it, maybe. Uh no. Uh, yeah, like I agree with you on that, of course. Like sometimes you don't wanna go to to greedy and uh give him the passing fate for free. Maybe it also surprises me a bit uh, that, um, like with Q the Nida, we can run more holdings, right? Because uh, we got the, the stronghold to buy characters, even if we have some province like um, occupied by holdings. And uh, uh, it's it's a bit of a surprise that you're not running any uh, uh, funeral pyre for the quartermaster. Or well, uh, it's 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 good in, <laughs> in itself because uh, like uh, with Q the Nida, it's just like really easy to find the the keeper initiates. 
and having a way to keep the to kill the the keeper uh, and uh, and win the the ring to have them another time this round is like a, a really cool trick that craft can do I believe and that that all with two funeral pies maybe you you can manage that. Maybe I, I have to well. consider them. I'm not sure if I will cut something or if I will just replace the Kuni Labs. But uh, the concept is that I need to run like three of so every three cost or four cost unique that I play so that I can cheat fate practically by buying them with a stronghold then playing a copy. Yeah. To equip Spyglass turn one or watch commander and stuff. Because normally, you know, we are not able to do that. We will lose like a province for sure. If, if especially if they have let go. Oh yeah, we usually build the the tower on the on the second round. Yeah. So, another thing um, that I don't like is actually uh, I think those who serve is good in a uh, swarm like deck but uh, i don't think those who serve actually works in the tower deck because i tried it myself and uh what i see is like me wasting a card wasting passing fate and uh maybe committing myself to buying many guys and then uh, don't have enough faith to actually play my conflict cards Mm, it's clear that uh, th those who serve uh, has uh, more impact if you're running like these low characters because discounting one fate of uh, one coster is much better than discounting one fate from I don't know Kisada. Yeah. Yep. And uh, and with Qdenida you can like get another one cost or two cost charter and and it's really good. Like w we know that those who serve is, is really good with Qdenida. But yeah, may maybe running uh, some uh, set of charters with uh, low costs and sacrifice effects and and um, most most importantly uh, the unyielding sensei, I believe it's called like like that, the the guy that puts uh, more guys into your holdings. Yeah, unyielding sensei. Yeah. Yeah, that that one. He's like pretty important if you're running uh, those who serve. Because it's it's more chances to see to see people and it's more discount if you can buy them. Uh, and Gilding Sensei also needs a holding, right? Yeah. Well, we don't run like I don't run holdings, so yeah, that many holdings. Yeah, that's part one. So, and so then, as like, I see part right two now... is this is a spyglass deck. This is a heavy tower deck. So for me, those who serve is like just a better replacement to a conflict character uh, even if I those who serve for like two just two characters and I play like a Yasuki and a tower like a, a, a guy I can tower I still like get plus one fate and instead of playing a hero masker, Mister, I play Yasuki. Which I use for a one to deck is like kind of better. Sorry to say that you can tower a Yasuki like <laughs> <laughs> with no troubles. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Like, but still, you know, you you get like what I'm saying. Yeah, it gets the spot of conflict characters pretty much. I, I consider I it a better it right conflict now, character. It's three builds that Crab is having. We have Spyglass with Tower, and we have Rebuild with Tower, and we have a Swarm deck. Yeah. Do you agree? Is there anything else? Yeah, I believe those those are the three like uh, main decks of Crab. Okay. And I mean, uh, there is variation in the splashes and uh, whatever, but that's the main idea. It's either you play Spyglass, or you play Rebuild and then you have a variation of a splash maybe, but you play tower. And then you yeah. can play, of course, the swarm-like deck. The one everyone knows as Krabidis. So. 
and uh, uh, we have seen that uh, this this Kravitz deck, this this Swarm deck, is like all the rage right now. Everyone is playing it on on Jigoku, and. Uh, and p people are like um, really surprised to see uh, the comeback of cards like Three Way of the Crab and, and these like I don't know really basic craft plays. Uh, but I I am not sure if this new deck we can discuss it now uh, is better than the old Spyglass deck or or than the Tower Rebuild deck. I... Like I, I can understand it, its appeal because it's it's something new. And it's something different, All right? You are not playing Unicorn Splash, uh, and as it is a, a new craft deck that does not play Unicorn, it will be nerfed into the ground, like in the next restricted list, <laughs> for sure. Like we know, we don't get to play other decks. You took yeah. care of that with Dragon Splash, like two years ago, <laughs> <laughs> and it got nerfed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I don't think it's better either. Um, it it has some matchups where some decks you can't out aggro, some decks you can't out last. It leaves me feeling very in between, and um, it it gives me a feeling where if you don't get a big way of the crab, then you can easily get stuck against the tower, especially if it's a crane with duelist training, for example. Um, oh, like, maybe it's also relatively worse against Scorpion. If they don't play Fate Wars and Death, and they play First Edict, then you can lose a lot of honor from characters, which Crab normally don't lose. Yeah. Like... We have to admit that uh, as long as Scorpion works uh, <laughs> like Scorpion is intended to work, like making your opponent lose honor, and Crab doesn't win honor by by any way, and and even has some cards that they take honor from you, like I don't know Kunilab, uh, we will always have a really bad matchup against them, and and I don't think that's going to change in I don't know the entire duration of the game. <laughs> they will always be our our I don't know counter. I I I think with Spyglass Tower build right now we are at least even if not slightly favored. Mm. My opinions on that matchup are like extreme always. You can ask <laughs> anyone. Um by the way And what do you think anyone? Oh yeah. By the way, uh, mm -hmm. Pablo, I had a question yeah. for you. Oh, I was watching <laughs> uh, the game uh, in Worlds Top 8. You lost to Jude Mayusi, right? Yeah. Well, w as an outsider looking in, had you played against any good Jude Mayusi before? Oh, no. It uh, looked like, like uh... at some point... I think it was very much your game up to a point, and then it got uh, turned around. Yeah, uh, like I, I definitely made some mistakes in that in that game. Like I should have played faster because uh, clearly I had the the game controlled, but I did not finish it in time, and maybe it was the pressure from from you know playing the top eight at worlds, yeah. but. Um, I should have been taking time into uh, taking the time to account, and should have played more quickly. And uh, uh, that game, I I was waiting for a for an iron mine to show up at some point to to build my tower, but it didn't, and I kept like um, not drawing my reprieves either, so. I was afraid of, of uh, putting my spyglass on a charter, like or, or passing from buying any charter in in one round, and uh, I didn't, I don't know, I didn't uh, get the money to use my cards in hand. It, it was a pretty terrible game, <laughs> if I look at it. Yeah, uh, yeah, like a big swing was also when you beat uh, one to his five. 
like at that point I, um, you treated him like a city of the open hand player where oh, his I, only win condition is this honor I don't know if I with one to his five like uh, I remember that I I made him use the the uh, duty with a four five a four to five five bit. that was the next turn uh, but I, I don't remember maybe I did I don't remember uh, bidding one to five but it, it didn't matter in the end because uh, even if I did, I had so many cards in hand, and I didn't play them because they—they they, uh, I needed fate from them, and I didn't have any <laughs> any fate in, in that game. Yeah, yeah. Okay, like I just wanted to go over it because it's a very unusual matchup, and we got to watch it at top eight of worlds, right? The biggest stage. <laughs> yeah. But don't worry, m making a mistake and, and losing the, in the top eight is is now a tradition for me. So <laughs> and losing into the stream, clear clearly. So it, it's uh, good. you are still like results wise top three, top four in the world with uh, Anil, Jakub, and Eric, right? Yeah, maybe uh, we have to take into account the the new Spanish. <laughs> Uh, Shogun too. He he also made uh, top eight with Phoenix last year. Uh, free uh, Flipao. It's, it's, he's known like that in the in the Discord server. Also Luis Sands. Yeah. Enagon, are you with us? Well, something like that. Yeah, I guess he has some technical issues or something. Uh, we can briefly also like cover your build. Oh uh, yeah. First of all, like you talk about it. Oh okay. Like uh, we were talking uh, earlier about this um, why the deck this um, uh, swarm crab deck, right? Yeah. And um, I believe that everyone that is uh, hearing us uh, knows this deck, but it's a cute and either deck. Uh, that uses the the stronghold ability and the ability from the Unyielding Sensei to uh, uh, play uh, those who serve and reduce the cost of a lot of characters. And I don't know, building this massive board with a lot of characters, a lot of them get sacrificed uh, to get like different effects. And you have Yasuki Broker to capitalize on those uh, on these uh, sacrifices. And surprisingly, and uh, you are Ryan. <laughs> Uh, CUNY Labs to to get uh, an, an incredible uh, stat boost because it gives plus one plus one to all of your characters and it's a fairly I don't know how to say it straightforward deck like it does one thing and it does that thing like really well it doesn't have a lot of tricks like it's running uh, most of the builds are running uh, three way of the crab but we know that the crab mm, events are not the, the best in the game. And uh, yeah, as it is a Q the deck, mo most of them are playing Rebuild as the restricted list card. Because of the um, uh, interaction with Cuny Labs and as a finisher in the game. And yeah, because you're running Q the and, and you want to, to reduce the the odds of, of dropping some really important uh, Holding like we were talking earlier about it, like Karada District or something like that. And um, as I was playing two years ago on the on the Winter Court, uh, I prefer to play these kind of decks without attachments because I, I don't I don't think that playing just uh, fine katanas and, and ornate fans is like they are good. They are clearly good, and, and some clans are. Are good um, running only six attachments, but I don't think Krab is because most of the people will will look for for their attachment hate against Krab, and, and maybe it's a good call to not have any attachment at all. And yeah, um, the best way to I don't know to use this Kuni Labs uh, strength uh, bonus and and all of this. Uh, it's having a lot of one drops from hand too, a lot of conflict characters, and you know, as you want to have the uh, the Yasuki Broker ability, you need to to play some attachment hate to remove the clothing mine from her. 
So it all <laughs> leads up to to Dragon's Splash. No, nobody plays Dragon's Splash in this game. <laughs> so you know you're playing Legos, you are playing rebuilds, and we talked about it earlier. Those who serve, we have the craft. Is uh, Hurricane Punch also considered like standard for the list? Oh no, because no. I see. I I running. don't think it is. Um, I think I remember um, uh, Mice Desire trying trying it at some point with with the deck, but it seems that he didn't like it. Uh, I really like Hurricane Punch, but it's like um, I don't know. It's most like a, more like a filler card because uh, as you are playing. Uh, attachments, you have uh, more room into the deck, yeah, and you're also not playing like uh, Keeper of Water mm -hmm. because you know, uh, water is not a really good ring to, to get your keepers off you, you don't want to be hitting water every round and uh, a fight on is not that important from this deck because you don't have any attachments and I don't know, your biggest character is Yasuki Roger. <laughs> It's not that intimidating. Um, but yeah, if if you can find room for them, I believe it, I believe that Hurricane Punch is a really powerful card. Because you you are playing Tattoo at Wonder as um as a splash card too. And also, you know, uh the idea of the deck is that uh, is getting your keepers really quickly. And Crab has gotten another <laughs> monk. Uh, this three guy, three cost guy from hand, the Warden of the Damned, mm. is he's also a monk. So it, it's another chapter that you can play the, the Hurricane Bench on. And you know, like having a lot of cards in hand, uh, it's not difficult for this deck because you, you draw so much cards. Like the, the drawing giant with, with uh, Pyres and Yasuki Broker is just crazy good. So it's. It's no problem to have, uh, I don't know, two of them sitting in your hand until you have the monk and, and the opportunity to play them. Um, what about, like, its problematic matchups? Do you find it uh, a good deck against, like, Crane, against uh, Scorpion with Forged Edict? Uh, well, what, like, issues have you faced with the deck? Yeah, um... The hardest matchup uh, uh, will always be uh, Scorpion. Like uh, Crab already struggles with the Scorpion because they they make you lose honor and you cannot uh, you don't have any way uh, to to win it. Uh, so I'm playing Prayers of Ibisu uh, to slightly improve the matchup, but I don't think it's a it's a good matchup. Like um, as you were saying earlier. Uh, even the standard crab deck that runs a spyglass at the standard, the standard in the days of old <laughs> <laughs> crab deck that uh, places a uh, spyglass um, have uh, had trouble beating beating Scorpion. But this this new deck uh, relies on sacrificing characters to to uh, get this value. So every card that they can play that dishonor a character also makes you lose an honor. Like you, you know, uh, way yeah. of the scorpion, mm, for shame. All these cards they are running on uh, mark of shame, and you cannot honor your characters to win honor because of mark of shame. Uh, it's really difficult to to win them and an air attack. They can deal with your Yasuki broker if you're not, uh, I don't know, lucky and flip your iron mines. So it's it's a pretty difficult matchup, yeah, <laughs> and. Um, would you consider I believe that running, you uh, like a sensor maybe to protect uh, the prayers to Ebisu or something like that? But it's uh, like you can definitely run sensor in this deck. I, I believe that it's a, it's a good card. But uh, the problem is that it's easier to play that sensor uh, in another matchup. But in the Scorpion matchup, you know that they are also running Censure. They will fight heavily for the Imperial Favor. And they have a character that, uh, <laughs> that lets them take the Imperial Favor with, with no discussion. Unless you have... Oh no, I, I, you, you cannot do anything because if, even if you target them with the with the Student of Anatomy, he just dies on another phase, right? So yeah. you can't do anything. And uh, 
and you know, there's there's no competition for, for playing that one. In my last deck, I was playing two prayers to Ibisu because um, I decided to play uh, two assassinations also to to way with to work with way of the craft, and it allows mm. you to to be like more aggressive at letting your your kuni labs in your provinces and playing your assassinations in, into I don't know normal normal games against uh, non dishonored clans. So it's it's also not death. And uh, yeah, it's it's a deck that does a good job against Unicorn too. Because you, you have, as I was saying, you have Assassination, you have Way of the Crab, and you have uh, normally two or three copies of In Defense of Rokuin. And it's a fairly you, card. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. But, uh, okay. I'm having a anyway, question about your deck. Uh, so, why is Keeper of Fire and that not Keeper of Earth? Is Earth not better for, like, Keepers? Keeper Farming, oh. I guess. It's really good for that deck. Yeah, I'm running Fist of Famine, and, and I believe it's really good for this deck. Okay, yeah. Fist of Famine, I see. Okay. And, and I, I absolutely despise uh, Defend the World, as you know. <laughs> I hate that card with, with, with all of my being. So uh, making my Apollo 30 uh, worse, it's also not, uh, not really good. But yeah, yeah, okay, makes sense. Yeah. If it wasn't for Apollo 30, um, I believe that every clan that wants to get their keepers out could be playing uh, Keeper of Earth. Because, you know, going Earth is better than going any other <laughs> ring. So it's it's pretty good. Uh, there is also Elegant Descent as well. Oh, yeah, that card is, is really good. I, I didn't... I haven't tested it um, because it was in the in the Sige, um, Dragon Clan Pack, right? Yeah, it's in the Dragon Clan Pack, yeah. And uh, it wasn't onto, onto Yugoku, so I didn't get to, to try it, but uh, it seems it seems really, really good. M maybe you can play... A, oh, no, definitely you can play... A, uh, this deck with attachments and, and maybe it's better that way, but I have to I have to try it. I don't I know mean, what I would remove. Probably uh, characters from hand, but it will change the, the the deck a bit. As I see, it is like a really cool card to attach on Oguri. So you get the double covered for two conflicts. Yeah, Ogur is, is is a good character if you're if you're running Tessen. That's for sure. Yeah. But yeah, basically the the deck works on the basis of of what we talked uh, earlier, playing a big those who serve, not necessarily in the in the first round, like uh, working for it a bit with the senses and and all of that is is pretty good. And then you you just have like eleven characters on the board. They all have plus one plus one or plus two plus two and and you win the game, and <laughs> yes, it's, it's, it's not a difficult deck. Just a question, um, like at least in theory, Crane seems to be problematic. If uh, if he gets to dodge the wave the crab first turn, um, how do you deal with it? I have been more in the in the other side. I haven't been playing Crane lately, so <laughs> I can talk about it in the in the in the Crane perspective. Like um, uh, definitely, if you don't get um, Student of Anatomy out early, it's a much difficult matchup because of uh, you know Toshimoko. And uh, uh, there's another really problematic character that it's uh, Iron Crane Legend because you draw so many cards. That he will be, I don't know, a 14, 15 strength character. And that's. <laughs> yeah, you can't beat that. You, you can't beat, the, uh, beat him. And and he's also like, you know, even if you drop all of your hand, you're losing. If you drop all of your hand to, I don't know, two cards, you're going to lose the game. But if even if you do that, he can go political. Yep. So. Um, yeah, the problem is if they get this much uh, bow effects, you, they get a big um, duelist and they get to attach he, him to duelist training and they have uh, these holdings, the Kakita Dojo, 
it's called, right? The Kakita Dojo and, and all of that. It can be like troublesome to, to fight them, but um, you have uh, a lot of uh, attachment hate because you have Karada and you have the Lil Goes. So maybe you could go go like there and you can uh, play in defense of Rokugan in your military defense to, to just um, ignore uh, the conflict. I don't know. It's it's a, a difficult matchup. It and sounds really... uh, even worse if they run like uh, Keeper of Void, where they have different gear owner as well. Yeah, Keeper, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's funny because uh, Crane used to be like our very good matchup, and now it's like the other way around. <laughs> but if you if you lose a lot to to Crane. You can always like uh, leave this deck in in your in your <laughs> your board, <laughs> take your tower deck, win some games, and then you can return to this deck when when you have. Yeah. <laughs> like they, they they have a bad matchup against the the craft tower deck. That's for sure. Nope. <laughs> That's not for sure. Nah, I, I believe they they have no way to to beat the uh, the gate two. Like uh, that character is is like the bane of of Crane. <laughs> it's really but, difficult for them to to. But they're running uh, tea house as well, so. Oh yeah, I don't know. Yeah. The, the the problem with uh, tea house in in Crane is that it um, clocks a province, right? It just sits on a province and and don't let them see more characters. And they have six uh, or s even seven. Holdings that want to live on their provinces, you know, the the Kakita Dojos, the, mm -hmm. the the houses, and the uh, Imperial Palace. So it's not that easy for them to to leave them on the provinces, and uh, and they also need, uh, um, you know, courtiers, and they cannot have a courtier in every conflict, and they have to be afraid of you playing the Yeta Tsubo after they use. The, the the house to I yeah. don't know uh, on a watch commander or something like that. So yeah, the house is clearly really good against crap, but it's not. Uh, I don't know. It, mm -hmm. it doesn't change the matchup that much. What I see as uh, hurting a lot uh, against Crane is like maybe don't don't take my advice to beat me, Cranes. But uh, when they have uh, policy debate on their starting hand. And we have to go on a conflict, and we cannot attach the Chubo or Talisman or something like that. And they just get rid of uh, the Chubo or Talisman for just policy debate. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I was playing three three Yeta Tsubos lately when I was playing, uh, you know, Tower Craft. With with a spyglass and all of that, or or even if you are playing it out of rebuild, I believe that mm -hmm. you can play three three eight source. Like you know, they, they were really well with um, Illustrious Forge. Yeah, <laughs> you of course. To go out of a province and, and bonking someone for free. <laughs> it's pretty if good. you know you're gonna see a lot of cranes, then uh, three to two is the way to go. Yeah. You got me considering so... uh, running it again, like. In more than one, one of. <laughs> I, I mean, didn't like it with like uh, it. Way of the Crab that much. Its uses overlap. Way of the Crab is a removal as well, but um, what I see is like uh, most of the time I thought of, of Way of the Crab as a card that it's like for the open list, so people will see it and they say, okay, he plays Way of the Crab, then I should respect it and blah blah blah. Uh, but now I see many people not respecting Way of the Crab at all. I mean, even good players are like saying, okay, uh, if he has it, he has it, and let's go play. So I, I have seen people, me buying uh, Kaiyu Envoy, and they, pl they just buy their tower and say, whatever. Mm, yeah, definitely people are making risky moves. And and maybe that's because uh, Crab hasn't been playing uh, Way of the Crab for 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 a long time, you know. Yep. Like like the standard Crab decklist didn't didn't run it, but 
now we have a, um, you know, we have another chapter to play the the way of the crab into the standard tower deck that it's the the gallant quartermaster. Mm -hmm. it's Agree. This one cost that gets uh, you to fate if you sacrifice it. So uh, this is how I started making my rebuild list again. So <laughs> using uh, using Kuren Hida. And because I was so frustrated with people not respecting Way of the Crab, and I was not playing it, but uh, people were not respecting thing as well. So I thought to myself, I should run one or two. <laughs> and then I added the Quartermaster as well, and the Funeral Pyre to accompany the Quartermaster, and Student of Anatomist. So now I'm facing Crane and, and Phoenix as well, and they, sometimes they cannot dodge way of the crab it's like they can't do anything about it. they will they will have to sacrifice a big guy and uh, uh, we, we were talking about it uh, earlier but uh G tetsubo can actually work with way of the crab because you can remove fate from ch from a character and you set up and the then, fate phase right yeah and then make sure that you have they only have one character that you want to to way of the crab into the fate phase yeah agree yeah it has lost uh, a tiny bit of value because of uh, Clock of the Night in the Phoenix matchup. Oh. But still, it remains a great card. Also, some part of people not respecting it currently, even if we run three, uh, it's really easy to go on Jigoku. Like, buy a tower, oh, I got Way of the Crab, okay, next don't see it, yeah. go next game, you know? Yeah, People that's a, don't that's play that's the right, same yeah. uh, when you sit on the table against them and they play for a tournament. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, like, I believe all of all of us really enjoy like playing on Yugoku, but it's not like the best way to improve your your play style or or to like you can gain you know like experience playing on Yugoku. But most of the people will do these these extremely risky gambles uh, in the games. So they will do these this huge all-ins, like I win the game or I lose the game. And it's not the best way to, you know, actually improve in playing in this game. Yeah, I agree. Agreed. And we haven't yet talked about the Negon's list. <laughs> so... The usual me is playing um, rebuild, so as I said, I I can only play rebuild during Hira, so I'm playing during Hira, and I like playing towers, so I'm using uh, unicorn splash again, and uh, it's like the normal thing with favored mount, talisman, and spoils of war, uh, but I actually removed the um, wayfinders because. Uh, I don't want to run Cloud of the Mind anymore uh, because Student of Anatomies exists. And uh, I'm, I'm actually trying a, a card that I haven't tried at all. It's Invocation of Ash. And uh, I really like the card because it lets you overtower uh, some of the tower matchup. And moving it around with, with Crab is not as difficult. Like uh, invocation of us is definitely a really powerful card, but the the issue with it it's uh, yeah it's like three three influence cost right yeah correct so yeah it it is like really heavy on the deck yeah it's heavy but um, I I'm not sure if I want to run the wayfinders uh, I will try them at some point but if if I want to run the wayfinders I have to remove some of my attachments so i don't want to, to remove uh, fun and katanas because they let yeah. me go above uh, crane or above the phoenix to then the tube them back yeah part of the reason we always used to run unicorns plus was that you could get like eight cards from 13 influence and we didn't have a really good conflict deck back then um now, like, I don't yep. think you can fit three more cards in here without 
significantly affecting some WhatsApps. For example, I mean, I training. could remove yeah. Wave the Crab, but uh, I want to have Wave the Crab in my deck just to to punish greedy people. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I think it's fine to 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 run Wave the Crab, crab as a two off, and as you are playing Alan Quarter Master and, and Amboys. And you're also playing Skirmisher from uh, as your you know conflict character. Yeah, maybe I should so, run more of those. <laughs> so I, I believe it's fine. Like um, the one of Kuniyori is also standing out. Yeah, um, um what I did uh, before I added Kuniyori is like uh, I saw that my deck had a lot of trouble in political uh, conflicts. Because we don't have any character that has high political skill. And uh, what I did is like uh, I went through the list of uh, the crab cards and uh, only Kuniyori had uh, four political printed on him. And, so, and I said, okay, I will run him as a one off because he's Shugenji as well and he might not be played against Phoenix. Uh, but also his action, if I, if I manage to buy him turn one against, uh, let's say, Crane or Dragon, and uh, each turn they will have minus one card because I'm not going to have trouble uh, with honor against them. And I can chop one of their cards each turn, and I think that's really powerful. It's beautiful to see Jory making a, a comeback, right? Because he he didn't see any play when he got, um, you know, when he got into the game. But as he's really good now with, with this white deck, and, and some of the tower decks are running him as a one-off, it's actually nice to, to see him because he's, you know, a fairly important character into the story. So He's my favorite guy as well. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, one thing that surprises me a lot when, when I see, uh, you know, this cute Anita Dex as, as yours, is that uh, people are playing like nine holdings and and, and the three keepers. Like I will count the, the keeper initiates as, as holdings. So, you know, you're lying, running like uh, 12 holdings. And and that's the same that we were playing in uh, Shiro Nishiyama. So at least when I am, you know, uh, making this Q uh, the Nita decks, I end up playing like fifteen uh, holdings, counting the the keepers. So it surprises me that uh, you guys don't uh, try to to force more holdings. You know, to, to like, get more value mean, of the of the stronghold. You mean the wall pieces as well? Oh no, no, no! I absolutely despise uh, wall pieces that are okay. not high forges. <laughs> so, so like, which, uh, which other holding do you want? Kuni Labs, I guess, or Star. Yeah, Labs. you can play one of Kuni Labs. Uh, you can play Imperial Palace. You can play the third favorable ground. Like you know, and this this move effect is is like crazy good into the game, and. Uh, I know I'm a sucker for cards. I love drawing cards because, you know, this is a card game and drawing card is always good. Yeah, of uh, course. So you mean storehouses as well? I'm playing storehouses, yeah. So, uh, I, I don't know, maybe maybe it's my playstyle, but I don't right. have any problems with with holdings when I'm playing Q either, even if I'm playing, you know, these 15 holdings or, or something like that. No, with Kuning Hida, I agree. Don't have uh, problems with uh, holdings, but um, I think it's more of your your kind of playstyle because I have some key characters that I I want to include. Like I cannot cut Kisada or I cannot cut Shuichi you or Witch Hunter. That, that's also like something that could be done if you cut uh, Switchy and Court Games. You could make up space for more holdings and something else in the conflict deck. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I, I believe could. that cutting core games is, is like a really <laughs> bullshy move, you know. Um, like it's, it's core games is probably up there with with Bansai as the best card in the game, you know. And, and also, um, as pa Pablo said, we don't have any way to like honor ourselves back. Okay. So Let's court games is like. Them. Court and, games, if you don't have a two glory character in our two of our most rel relevant matchups, Scorpion and 
a crane. It will be next to dead. And in a... Like we are talking about a tower deck. You won't easily get killed by a noble sack here. And you also have uh, unicorn, which don't let you go political easily. You need the big guy to defend. So you can end up just staring at them for a, a one stat buff. I disagree uh, for Crane because actually I was playing uh, a local friend, uh, Sly Knight, uh, the other day. And uh, I actually used court games on my witch hunter to just honor her and uh, disrupt his, uh, his voice. voice of honor. Voice yeah. of honor. That also happens, but it's more rare these days uh, because the, it's just too easy for them to get honored, right? M most of the time, yeah, you only have to think about how many how many uh, times uh, in in a match. In a game, uh, it happens that one player plays uh, his good games, and the other one says, "Yeah, hey, I also have a good games. Remove that honor token from your <laughs> from your character." Like it, that happens like almost every game I see. So uh, running cool games only to counter the your opponent core games is is a pretty good move, I believe. Yeah, uh, that's how I use court games. Against Crane, I will honor my guys. Against every other guy, except except Scorpion, I will just say, okay, you court games, I court games back. <laughs> because, you know, uh, like, uh, if they honor a two or three, even three glory uh, character, it's a um, <laughs> plus two, plus two, or plus three, plus three permanent to the character, and, and also an honor gain. So yeah. it also hurts your your win condition of watch commander, not not dishonor your watch commander win condition. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I believe that playing cool games is is like um, next. It's not mandatory, but it's next next to it. Like it's it's a really crazy card. I have another card that uh, I want you guys to comment on. It's like uh, Ichiro. Do you know the guy? It's like from the uh, Dragon Pack. Yeah. Would you include him in like in a tower deck? If Scorpion oh. keep playing the way they are, yeah, of course. But I think very soon they will change their decks because of Ichiro. It's an auto win, practically. Yeah, like mm, he's really, really good against against them. And I was thinking if he could be good. Uh, against Crane, but they can just honor themselves and mm -hmm. then play attachments. Correct. So, That's what I thought as well. Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of like a, a silver bullet for for Scorpion, and that's not bad because you know you're playing Q either You can you can afford to to have this one off or characters as you can you know search search for them really quickly. So yeah, m maybe you can play him as a one-off or as a two-off, but um, the deck seems like really, really, you know, tight. Uh, you have you don't have a lot of room in this deck, yep. so it should be difficult to to find uh, someone to take out for him. Um, like depends on how prevalent the Scorpion matchup is in the tournaments you expect to go to and yeah. like maybe you can switch off uh, switchy if you have like two really good scorpion players or something at some point we had four phoenixes in greece for example and we really needed to change our decks for that yeah it, it's nice to have to have that that option against scorpion yeah it's like a, a tech card against scorpion like yeah, you you can be preparing for a tournament and say, hey, fuck it, I, I'm not going to lose to to Jakub this one, and you can <laughs> be, be, be heroes and and yeah. <laughs> Plus, if uh, just Crane play Ichiro, which they will do instead of uh, give it up keep six, uh, it will force Scorpion to rethink their choices. Because they can't have a matchup where it's 10-0 uh, against them. They will have to do, change their decks. I think Crane will play him. Yeah. M yeah. Maybe as a 3-off as well. For sure. Yeah. 
like it also works with you know duel to death yeah so it's 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 a nice interaction there and they can as as we were saying uh, they can just honor themselves and then play some attachments for a permanent honor character into the board and that's Correct. like pretty pretty rough yeah, so very, very... maybe a scorpion will be play uh, will be forced uh, to play you know uh Cloud of Mine? I don't yep. know. They, they have Wutsu Ganges. So. But they have to run more uh, attachments as well because they were just going to get let go on yep. their Cloud of Mine. Like, I, I don't know how this will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, 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 at we, least, at least it, it's good to, to force um, Scorpion decks to, to change a bit. Because yes. they, they have been playing like, like crap, you know, this... this Variations of, of, of this, this uh, the same deck, and it's good to, to to see them, you know, actually having to think about the meta and and all of that. Another question for you guys. General. General. So I know I'm I'm using Spoils of War in my Unicorns Plus, and some people are saying I should play Barza. Uh, but I don't like the card. So, do you want to comment on Spoils of War and Barta as, as scraps? Um, Barta does not do anything like relatively similar to Spoils of War. I prefer Spoils. Barta in your deck would uh, contest the place of Invocation of Ash. But it's really circumstantial, and uh, most good players will play around it, especially like Scorpion won't care about it, Unicorn, eh, maybe, but you need to have the faith, like turn one it's dead, and Crane if they play around it and they run like 8 attachment hate you can't exactly punish them with it mm -hmm. I really like Barcha maybe I like Barcha better than, than Spells of War but you have to take into account that it's it's a two, another true fate attachment so I haven't played your deck you know better than me if, if if you can manage to to you know run this another two cost attachment but uh, barcha is really powerful and when you can uh, find your unique characters quickly with with q Danida to to play uh, barcha on them it might be really powerful yeah so the problem is that you know you only have Three uh, or yeah, three unique characters and uh, one of Kunijari. And so, there is. Uh, uh, and you don't want to put a barge on to Hikaru. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. You don't want to put the barge on Hikaru. So yeah, maybe it's not as good in in, in your deck. But it's pretty good with with Suichi, for example, because you can just cover yeah. their big military guy. Break a province and then bow them if they if they. Yeah, with Suiti, it's perfect. But uh, yeah, I, I can understand why why you don't play it. Spoils of War may may not be, uh, you know, this this crazy good card, but the uh, Fabred Mountain Talisman of the Sun are incredibly good for for the deck. My favorite uh, turn one play is uh, having Phyton on my. Starting hand and spoils war, and then I just go buy Kisada with two fate and I attack. <laughs> I spoil the war and then I can get the defense as well. You did that to me, and, and we play the game. Oh yeah, yeah, you, correct. You, remember, <laughs> you did that to me in the first round, and, and yeah, that, yeah, that's pretty nasty. <laughs> um, by the way, have you all tested Hikaru? What oh, are yeah. your impressions of him? Is he Really good, mediocre. I like Hikaru a lot. It's like um, sometimes uh, Crane uh, opponents will just say, I pass my conflict because they know they will run uh, and they will get Talisman as well. So I will 
get the read of one of their guys and then talisman to to win a ring in uh defend the world so they will just pass their conflict i believe she's crazy good like she's actually a craft character with three ghosts uh unique and with a battle action you know with with this this kind of proactive uh, effect so uh it's it's really good because um uh, it's a character that does not uh, ask you to put, uh, you know, attachments on it. It works better if it doesn't have any attach. It's pretty nice because you can build your tower, have your tower destroy provinces, and then have Hikaru defend. Yeah. And yeah, I really like her. I you really can really also like, like build him into a political tower and uh, just like favored mount him back or something. And, oh yeah. Uh, one of his best matchups actually is Phoenix. And uh, he 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 is one of those cards where it used to be if you don't have the Phoenix really low on honor at some point he will just throw three supernatural storms at you and it doesn't matter what your towers do, right? You just lose the conflict. Now, with Hikaru, things have changed and it's starting to get hard for them to force out like a big conflict at your stronghold as they used to do. Yeah, like, she's really good. And, and as you said, he, um, the, the combination of Hikaru and, for, and Favorite Mount is, is crazy good too. Yeah, it's very good. And uh, one thing, I, I am not playing uh, Ida Kotoe, the the craft character from the Dragon Clan pack, because I haven't been, as I said, I haven't been playing craft lately, so my my decks are not up to date. But uh, as I was uh, hearing your last podcast, and most of the players didn't didn't seem to to like her. I believe she should be a one-off in every craft deck. You know, this character that destroys uh, attachments when you win a defense. Yeah, yeah, but uh, are you talking about or when it's like a, a pacifism meta or something like that? No, or is no, it just no, remove uh, an attachment? Like, the game has to change a lot uh, to... Um, yeah, you know, like, it has to change... Um, the way it's played, uh, to not want a three drop from hand that cannot be assassinated with not so bad stats that can freely destroy attachments, you know, like it's it opens up um, playing a chatter from hand and then playing attachments on it because it's not assassinable, yeah, yeah, and uh, um, you know. The one thing that crap has always lacked is a way to remove your own clue the mine. Because you can deal with, with your opening attachments uh, with Karada District. But, uh, you, you know, uh, my Kisada is always clouded. I believe that <laughs> your Kisada would always be clouded too. It's part of but this effect. is again, against uh, Phoenix right now. Uh, none of the other clans are playing cloud the mine. I don't know, like, um, she turns these, these little poke attacks, you know, like, it's, it's a fairly common game, into the game, like, they, you, you have this crazy big Kisada and they will just um, send their, their um, little character to, to force you to defend or, or they will mm -hmm. get a ring. And then you can play, play her and, you know, just breaking a katana is, is pretty good when you're playing um, Gita Trubos and all of that. And the best thing is that she's not, you know, she wins the defense, she breaks the the attachments, and you still have her. Like, they will have to take into account uh, their attacks, that you can just defend with her and, and take out attachments. I, I don't know. Me... I believe she's, she's incredibly good. And she yeah, will... Uh, I will try her. I'm planning to, to play her in my normal deck as a 41 card and see if I like her or not. And like, I haven't maybe, maybe you're right. tested here, but 
three one stats is extremely underwhelming. Political matters way more than military, and uh, you don't really have many huge plays with fate. So if the opponent sees you hoarding like five or six fate, because you won't play here with one, right? Uh, Maybe two. Or three, he yeah. knows what you are up to. Like he he can guess. And as Senegon said, in a non-pacifist meta where only one deck runs Cloud the Mind and our worst matchup, Scorpion, uh, runs zero attachments, I find it to be like a really good, but not for the meta uh, call, even as a one-off. In a meta like the Winter Court one, where like two of the seven clans run attachments, then yeah, of course, she would be much better. But uh, which clans do you guys think are, uh, think are the, like, tier one right now? I would say Scorpion and Crane, and then I would put us and Phoenix on the same spot just below them. Uh, yeah, some, something, I, I also think something same. like that. And uh, it's like against Phoenix, you will uh, remove, you know, Claw the Mind, and, and they are also running Fine Katanas and Ronade Fines. You will have plenty of attachments to choose in the Grim matchup, and you have uh, you will have plenty of attachments to choose in the Crab matchup. So yeah, it's not as good as it should be uh, as it could be uh, in a Scorpion, but I think there's a lot of mm, yeah, you know, these this good matchups and these good decks in the meta, they are running attachments. The problem Maybe is... not a lot of them, but you are also not running, you know, three copies of her or something like that. Yeah. Also, being able to, to buy Kaio Envoy and um, immediately pass on the first turn, uh, it's, uh, it's a good play. It's like yeah. uh, you're forcing your opponent to buy more guys, lose the passing fate, and you're having... Uh, Yasuke Envoy that will give you back your faith and your card and then you can play like your conflict character to win one or two conflicts. I like I don't see I I can't see here winning political with one base stat. She needs a tower on her side. It's ornate like, fun. Like, even against it's just an ornate uh, fun. Okay, it's three three. Th that's an ethereal dreamer. That's uh, a Doom Sugenza. They win in attack, right? So, like, that's my issue with her. She needs a tower, and the mountain does not fall on the tower to work. Because else, like, okay, you play here, even if you have something else in the conflict. Uh, the Phoenix player can just throw a supernatural storm, and you are not winning that conflict. If he sees you with 5 fate, he will just go political first. And at that point, Kisada is locked anyway, you know. So, like, my, my issues with her is... I can see her being dead in a lot of matchups. And we are, on, we are not running cards uh, in most decks like Censure or Assassination, which seems insane with 3 Way of the Crab. So... Too much of a win more if you want to play a card that is dead in the Scorpion matchup and good in the others. Just play Assassination. That's my rant. <laughs> <laughs> so overall, as Crab, uh, are you happy about uh, our new cards, the uh, the pack, and how we are in the meta at the moment? Oh, definitely. Yeah. We have good decks, and we have finally some um, different decks to 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 play. Yep. And even if even in these different decks, you, you can choose you know like different splashes or running or not running attachments. So so yeah, we have we have a lot of of things to choose from. So yeah, I'm pretty happy. Aside from uh, Kuden Hida, do you have another favorite card from our clan pack? Oh, Kaiu Forges is, is crazy good. But uh, not being crazy good, but being really funny, I really like Subterranean Guile. Mm -hmm. 
the one that gives you covered if you have a, yeah, a yeah. holding. And uh, as it allows you to to reach, you know, this critical mass of of covered effects in craft, it's a pretty funny deck. What about Oushi? Do you guys like her? You know yeah. that the moment she was announced, I was sure she would be bad. Uh, and she is just a unique Borderlands defender without an effect. That's all. <laughs> that, that's literally uh, what the card says. And I, okay. I have used I play her, her <laughs> effect. Like um, only being a three-three with with unique, as as you say, is 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 pretty good. You know, just to build your tower and and get a free point at some point of the game. Um, a free fate, but um, I have used her ability. She works really well with uh, the mountain does not fall because you can yep. just do your your two defenses, and then even if you're the first player, you will have another conflict. So I like her, and you know, a thing that you will see about when you're playing against Unicorn is that even if that's not their their focus. Um, sometimes they can, you know, pressure you by by honor because they will do several um, unopposed attacks because of the third this third military conflict. Mm -hmm. So as most of our um, tower decks rely on the dishonor victory, uh, making another you know another attack where you can just win a ring and make them lose one honor is, is pretty important if, if you can manage to do that yeah i see her uh, like the way you're saying as well but um having actually the guys to make the extra conflict might be hard i don't know yeah, yeah. Uh, i don't see her far. as a very consistent card that's my main issue with those yeah even with uh, those who serve for more guys still the effect doesn't really get triggered much. Nonetheless, just for her stat line and her being unique, she's she's good, and she can also pick up Barta, which is important yeah. Uh, yeah. for some builds. So, boys, I think uh, we covered all three builds. Maybe at some point we can see a, a fourth one uh, <laughs> with Lions Plus. I can't really, you know, completely disregard it. There is the wall deck as well. Kappa. Oh. <laughs> we don't wall talk deck about now. the wall deck. Don't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that to yourself. Yeah, yeah, I'm just making fun. <laughs> That's what people are like. Yo, you are not playing the broken cards from the crab pack. You're not playing yeah. the wall pieces. Dude. Those are the people that want play crab every life and just say, why are you not playing the wall deck? Hmm. You should Kirlis play Armin. the wall deck Sar to tell me. Kirlis Armin and Atzel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, I think pretty much that will be all for the episode. Any quick conclusion you would like to, to come to? It was a, a pleasure coming here and, and talking with you guys, and I'm, I'm really happy uh, about your initiative making this, you know, this kind of European podcast in, in English, even if you're not uh, English speakers. And it, it takes a lot of guts, so good luck, and uh, I like what you guys are doing. We... Even if, even if we... no one will understand us with, with this, with our accent. <laughs> But we really liked uh, having you, and thank you so much for accepting the invitation. Uh, thank you for accepting, and uh, don't worry about it. Like It's the Thick Accent podcast. They know yeah, what yeah. they're into. <laughs> uh, get Flippa to come, have a talk with Demagog and Kirlis Army, and we will set up the next episodes later with more guests and... Uh, even more well-known players. So, that's it for this episode. See you guys around. See you. Bye.